Okay. Um, good evening, Mark and Hackney's um, Planning Committee. Um, the Council will be recording this meeting and proceeding to be on YouTube. Uh, my name is Councillor Vincent Stops um, and I shall be chairing this evening's meeting. We'll be undertaking the meeting in as close a fashion as we can to our normal format of these meetings. Um, the virtual meeting technology has a chat function. Please only use it to raise technology related issues. It won't be Please ensure that you are visible. Um, that particularly applies to councillors. Um, participants who have registered their interest to speak in the meeting should only speak when they're invited by me. Um, one person only may speak at a time. Um, if you're registered, turn on your microphone um, when you're asked to speak. Um, if there's any disruption, we have the ability to remove you ultimately from the meeting. Um, if there is any internet problems, we'll try and resume as soon as we can. Um, if any committee member has any problems and is, is out of um, contact, um, they won't be able to take part in the, um, the decision and won't be able to vote. Um, so I'm going to ask members to introduce themselves first and I'll go around the top and I can see Claire first, please. Claire Potter. Hello there, everybody. I'm uh, Claire, Claire Potter and I'm a councillor in Brownswood Ward. Stephen. Councillor Steve Race from Hoxton East. Um, Katie. Katie. Sorry, Katie, John. Katie, Katie Hansen, Vice Chair. And uh, Michael. Hello, good evening. I'm Michael Levy, Springfield Ward. And Peter, please. Uh, Peter Snell, Councillor for Dalston Ward. Thank you very much. So we have a good. Vincent, Vincent I'm here as well. Say again. I thought my screen's going black, but I'm here as well. Ah, Brian, you're here. Where's Brian? My screen's going black. Okay, introduce yourself, Brian. Councillor Brian Bell. Thank you. Um, we've got the acting head of planning, Natalie, here with us. Um, Christine from our legal department and Gareth, our uh, governor's service officer, um, who some of you will have contacted about talking this evening. Um, there are other planning, design and transport officers here to advise us this evening. Um, before moving on to the agenda, I'll take a couple of minutes to explain how the meeting will proceed. Um, we'll hear each application, there's actually only one this evening, summarised by the officers, a five minute statement from the objectors, and normally a five minute statement uh, from, the, from the objectors, but there aren't any, um, and so a five minute statement from the applicant. Members will then be free to ask their questions. It's my role to make sure that members have all the information they need to make a decision, objectors and applicants have their say, and that the meeting runs properly. I'll not be taking any contributions from the floor. This is a meeting in public, not a public meeting. You must have given notice to the government service officer before the meeting to register to speak. As I've said, um, applicant, you'll have five minutes um, to speak to us this evening. Members are not representing either their wards nor their political parties. We'll make our decisions on the basis of site visits we've made, what we've read in the reports, and of course, what we hear this evening. We must only take account of policies adopted by the Council, other material planning policies and material considerations. Members making the decision should not have allowed themselves to prejudge any application prior to the meeting. Similarly, if they have interest in the application site or the people involved, they should declare that interest and remove themselves from the decision. When we've finished our deliberations, we'll vote on the recommendation. I'll describe the voting procedure before we vote. When the decision is made, this is the end of the matter for the committee and the applicant may appeal our decision to Secretary of State. Objectors um, may seek legal redress and advise you to take professional advice in either case. And now we'll move to the agenda. Um, apologies for absence. Um, I think we're including Claire Joseph because she still has a, um, a notice on her, um, on her um, out of office. Um, That's are, correct, Chair. Are there any other apologies, please? I'm not aware of any, Chair. Okay. Declarations of interest, just to say, this is in my ward. Clearly, it's a very important 
um, site in my ward, um, but I've not been involved in any of the um, discussions or um, anything, any involvement with it at all, really. Um, sadly so. Um, then, uh, any other declarations of interest at all? Uh, okay, we haven't received any correspondence from anybody, as far as I know. Um, I mean, the, yeah, obviously, uh, we we all we've all used the station, but my understanding is that that doesn't. No, I don't think um, so. you're just hear anything. But just in case anyone's watching and interested. Okay, thank you. Um, minutes of the previous meeting, you remember I delayed them because I had some concerns about some of them. Um, I've looked through it and I've, uh, I'm, I'm happier than I was last time. Uh, anybody else got any um, issues on the minutes of the 2nd of... Um, That's the 20th of July. 20th yeah. of July. 29th of July. Yes. <coughs> Oh, okay, so we're happy for that with those minutes. Thank you very much, Chair. Yes, we are. Um, right, without further ado, we can move on to um, Hackney Central Station. Um, I hope uh, Mr. Perry is not here because I'll say it's the most important station in the borough. Um, he was critical of my commentary about uh, Shoreditch last week. So, Hackney Central Station, please, um, Claire. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. And good evening, everybody. Um, I will just pull up my presentation. Are you all able to see that now? We are. I am. Brilliant. Yes, we are. So the site is 221 to 237 Graham Road. Uh, this is the red line boundary of the site. Uh, just to highlight, this is a council owned site with the application being made by TFL. Uh, so just to give context, to the south of the site along here is Graham Road and to the north is Hackney Central Station with the existing of the building here to the north. This is just an aerial view of the site. Um, so this is the site here with Graham Road along to the south. The properties to the west are residential and the properties to the east are mixed use. So commercial along, along the ground floor and then, um, sorry, residential on the upper floors. And then we have obviously Hackney Central Station to the north. So this is just an overview of the proposal uh, the proposal is to create a new southern entrance to Hackney Central Station on the existing site. Uh, so patrons will access it from Graham Road, move through the new ticket gate building, up the stairs, up to Platform 1, which will obviously then allow them to go to Platform 2 if they wish. Uh, the proposal also includes a cycle hub system, um, so Sheffield stands and two-tiered enclosed stands, a coffee kiosk and general landscaping. So this is just a view from the front of the site taken from Graham Road. So currently the site is used as an informal garden. Um, and then here to the west are the residential buildings. So this is 229 Graham Road. And then this is 239 Graham Road. So the mixed use building. And then this is just a photo within the site of the existing garden. And this is a view of the property to the east. So 239 Graham Road and then a view of the property to the west and other residential properties further along. So this is just the proposed site plan again, um, showing how it will all be placed. Um, to highlight there are so this ticket vending machines, a new um, gating enclosure and cycle hub enclosure, steps going up to the platform, there's also a staff welfare centre underneath the stairs. And then we've got the coffee kiosk and associated landscaping. It's also worth to highlight that the gating enclosure and the cycle hub both have green roofs. And this is just a view of the front elevation of the site. And then there's just a couple of sections. So this is the existing through section of the site and the proposed showing steps up to platform one. This is the existing uh, 
through the site and proposed. So this application has been presented to members tonight due to the level of public interest we received. We received four objections prior to the publication of this of our committee report and then five following that. The five have been addressed in our addendum. Um, and then also just to highlight that this is a resubmitted application. So we lost the original due to the cyber attack. Uh, and this has been reconsulted as per the, the regular process. Uh, so the main objections received related to landscaping and sustainability and climate change issues. We've addressed these in the report and for the reasons that we've discussed in the report, we believe that the proposal is acceptable. Uh, it, should be it should be granted subject to conditions and a section 106 agreement. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. Um, now, I think Craig is... Craig, are you going to talk to yeah. Yes, I'm here, thank you. Yeah, I'll... Uh, did you want to start first, Mark, or shall I start? Should, shall I go first, just with a little bit of history of... Um, you go first, yes, and well, I'll carry on. Yeah, sure. Um, just, a, just a quick overview. Um, TfL uh, through London Overground took over the uh, station in 2007 from Silverlink. Uh, it was a little used uh, route at the time and has become, shall we say, a victim of its own success, uh, especially uh, in the east end of the route uh, where Hackney is. Um, I was involved right from the beginning at 2006 where I was uh, put the gates in, uh, the ticket machines in, and when we oysterized uh, the station. Um, from that, we moved on to 2011 where we were started to do quite well, so we extended the booking hall ahead of the London Olympics and the lifts went on which has been a, a great uh, asset to the station and the area. Uh, 213 we started the uh, interchange feasibility work which is the route that connects the two stations the Hackney Downs and the Hackney Central together. Uh, that work was done for us by TTPP who are uh, working for us on uh, this, uh, this project as well. Um, that we opened and again has been a great success it's ahead of its numbers that uh, we expected it to be and a really good partnership between network rail Lon uh, london borough of hackney and tfl in delivering that um i think it's actually dedicated to roger blake uh, there's a plaque there because we work with him closely on it uh, who was our the transport officer at the time uh, between 2017 and 2019, to give some idea of usage, uh, we had 6.64 million in 2017, and that number is now went up to nine in 2019 to 7.36 million. So that's an increase of 10% over the two years, um, which equates really to 13,000 mm -hmm. in and 11,000 out passengers every day during the week, and 6,000, 7,000 on a Sunday. Obviously, it has shown great growth, and we started looking at ways that we could relieve the congestion. The platform, for those that are familiar and use the station, is very narrow at the part of the ticket office and where the steps are and the overbridge. So we did some counts to find out how many people actually, where, where the people went when they left the station. And we found that between 30 and 35% of them actually go into the town centre and go walk across Graham Road um, towards the town hall and that part of Mayor Street. Um, the other thing was that dwell times started to have started to um, suffer because the number of people trying to get off the train and through the gate line and those of course that are trying to go in the uh, the other way uh, to join the train so that really is sort of the reason that we've been thinking hard and working with the local authority and network rail for a scheme that relieves this congestion <laughs> makes our station much friendlier and easier to use for all of our customers okay thank you mark i think you've given me uh, 90 seconds <laughs> so oh, i'll um, sorry. yeah that's no, okay so um, I think Claire's described what the scheme is, what it includes. So I thought I'd just use my uh, little slot just to kind of go through a, a couple of items which are relevant. While we've been designing the scheme, 
with them um, taking on board comments from from local kind of stakeholders and interested parties and so the scheme has, has developed so we now include the green roofs we have um permeable paving to allow sustainable drainage we have um, new planters at the frontage we have a a timber pergola which would encourage um, planting oh, yeah. as well and so you know we've, we've taken on board comments and, and created a, a kind of new um, public realm area at the front as well which kind of helps in that part of, of Hackney on Graham Road um, one of the other comments secondly um, was about construction and I suppose one of the benefits of this site is it's quite a large site so the idea is lots of storage of materials construction waste would actually be on the site itself without having to block up the Graham Road itself and we're using uh, modular construction techniques with the with the gate line and with the cycle shelter which again speeds up construction um, makes the process quicker and avoids disruption um, and that's 10 seconds left so I'll, I'll leave it there for now and um, hand back to the chair Thank you very much. Um, I will hand over to members straight away. I just wanted to um, clarify that the statement of community involvement, Natalie, I think has been changed, hasn't it? Um, what does that mean in terms of our uh, consultation processes, etc.? Uh, it, it has. So at uh, Cabinet on Monday, there was um, an amendment, a temporary amendment to our statement of community involvement. Um, it doesn't affect this particular application. So um, it's um, for um, the removal of the requirement to notify objectors to, to decisions. Um, but we will still continue to notify objectors where we do hold that information. It's a direct result of the cyber attack. It's just a temporary measure. But in the case of this application, we do have um, the objectors details and third party details. So we will continue to notify them. OK, thank you very much. OK, so members, please, can I go round? Peter, you're most interested in this site, aren't you? Peter, ask the first question. Uh, well, obviously, you represent half of uh, Graham Road and I represent the other half of Graham Road as a councillor. So, uh, uh, and we all know uh, how ridiculous some of the obstructions to the bus route and the problems on the junction with Mayor Street have been in recent uh, uh, years. So, I, I think what I would like in the minutes is a reference to the uh, construction management plan has to do everything it can to minimise obstructions to the bus route and perhaps take alternative methods to uh, reduce that. We, this isn't a planning, it, it, you know, it's not part of the decision, but that needs to be looked at properly. I mean, we were absolutely appalled when we found there was a skip parked in, in the bus lane, uh, potentially there for the next three months when the first uh, 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 low traffic neighbourhoods were introduced. There's a lot of increased traffic on this road. It is. Uh, causing a lot of upset to people who live along it and nearby and we must make sure that is addressed in the uh, in, in in the development plan and on the bigger issue and there's an extent to which this is to the applicants i love to hear about roger blake we all loved him he was such a fantastic guy a, a brilliant council officer and, and and everybody in the community who cared about transport loved him um but i do remember Actually, when uh, the new Angel uh, station was developed, when the um, Northern Line was upgraded, and I just slightly feel that this is a missed opportunity, because when they put that big new entrance to the station out on Upper Street, previously it was hidden away in a back street, uh, suddenly you thought, wow, Islington looks like it's got a town centre. And there's an extent to which I think it's all very well keeping it low key and everything else but and, and obviously this is not a station of the nature that that is um but perhaps from the proposers of this application but also from our design team can't we do more with it you know that's a bit drab and run down that far end of graham road and i'd have thought there'd be nothing better than to actually advertise the fact that this is now as you say a hugely successful station the current entrance is hidden away at the back of a car park. Shouldn't we be celebrating what's been a great, great success, entirely due to the Labour Party, I might suggest, um, uh, over the years of getting that line into use and a popular line in creating an outer London circular route. But let's celebrate it and let's try and do something more with it. 
I, I'm not going to vote against the application on that basis, but I do feel it's a lost opportunity. Okay, what does the presence of the station look like then, um, Craig? Um, are you taking that on board? Is it going to be a proper station entrance with a totem pole, etc.? It will, it will be a proper station entrance with a totem pole, a, a hackney sign above the entrance. Um, it'll be very welcoming, and, and as we mentioned, it, the idea is it will be part of the public realm. I think I think it's important to say that the, the station design has been designed in in the way to address the immediate need of addressing congestion. Um, a, a larger, bigger scale um, construction stroke building would take a, a longer time to kind of design, develop, etc. However, um, that said, um, I know that Hackney um, Network Rail and, and TfL. Um, uh, we'll be working together to, you know, look at future opportunities for this site and, and a bigger development. It, it's seen that this is um, not a stopgap, not temporary, but you know, a, a solution for now. And it's not; it's designed so it will not stop any potential other future developments on the site in the future. Thank you, Peter. Design. Are we happy that no, the Peter Kelly? Are we happy that we've maxed out the placemaking capabilities of this? development um so uh hackney's conservation and urban design team um were not involved in a detailed pre-app for this site um however other parts of the council were and thought very carefully about the sort of design details ha um the hackney's planning department do like you like you mentioned uh councillor snell we we do want to see eventually a substantial development on this site um with a with a station integrated into it and from what we've seen in the in the application it's all been designed to be um lightweight and dismantleable but also high quality in the sh in the short term so it won't rule out um a future more substantial development so we're quite happy with it from that point of view okay so we're doing what we can um katie uh thanks chair not so much a question but an observation i mean i saw um in the representations they're not really objections there's some more sort of suggestions for planting things i mean someone was saying we should prevent the coffee store from being allowed to give out disposable cups i'm not sure this planning committee has that power but i just wanted to say how pleased i was to see there's going to be a drinking fountain because that does actually address the single-use plastic issue um and i'm just wondering aloud if we can make drinking fountains a requirement in future things that come to committee um, the, oh, the, oh, sorry, yes, there was, there was a more serious point I was going to make, Chair, which is about step-free access. Um, I've, I read that section of the report quite carefully, and I can see that, you know, that there's a commitment to doing it in the future if, it, if possible, when, when land is released. Um, again, like Councillor Snell, I mean, I've, I'd very much like it minuted. I'm, I'm sure other committee members agree that we would prefer this to be step-free if at all possible, and we would, you know, like it on record that anything that can be done to make this entrance step free in the future, we would want to commit ourselves to as a council. I'll leave it to the officers to come up with a form of words that reflects that, Chair. Thank you. And from a highways perspective, I, a let's say a wheelchair user who arrives at the wrong entrance, um, we're going to audit and insist that the paving, etc., is level and um, accessible. Is that all in there? Who's going to tell me it is? There is stuff over the chair. It's in the report, and the, and the, there's a commitment to things like signage um, okay. on on the on street route. But you do basically have to walk around the block, well, or wheel yourself around the block if you yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. are a wheelchair user, which you know clearly is suboptimal. I wouldn't. I don't. I, I think it would be cutting off our nose to spite our face, because obviously, given this entrance doesn't exist at the moment, it's not like anyone will be any worse off than they are today. But I don't like the idea that it won't be accessible to all our citizens and i would like it sort of on record that we'd like to rectify that if if and when it can be done okay is anybody alive to all of that um great you can draw it to the attention of whoever the relevant people are i'd be grateful well, it, it's our highways um, the 278 um commitment does it include going around the corner and, and ensuring that 
wheelchair users can get all the way. Claire? Thanks, Chair. Um, I think Dominic West might be the best person to speak to this. Dominic? Yes, um, yes uh, thanks for that, uh, Chair. Yes, it's a, reasonable, it's a reasonable comment, and it's one that was actually taken up by number of organizations um, and in the uh, in, in fact as part of the derogation given by the Department for Transport there is a, a requirement to be for there to be an unobstructed route from the Graham Road entrance to the Amherst Road entrance uh, they've even stipulated that there should be some seating in between um, and that is a requirement of, of the uh, that will be taken on board and implemented as part of the planning permission. It's, it's a very important consideration. Um, we on the issue of the lift, we would have liked to have gone for a lift, um, but unfortunately, um, it's, it's it's the cost implications. This is this is on a, on a budget, um, and but it is being future proofed. And if, if there is if there was additional funding available at any stage, then that's something that we would be very, very keen to promote. But at this moment in time, unfortunately, the, the cost implications mean that will be um, a lift at this, at this 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 access to the station. Thank you. And Natalie, the water fountain thing, are we going to have water fountains every time we have a public building? Yes, Chair. Well, not quite every time, but um, I'm pleased to say that the new local plan introduces a policy which does um, encourage uh, and, and require um, free, drink it, free water fountains um, as part of commercial development uh, within our major town centres. Uh, so, um, yeah, hopefully that's something that we'll see more of coming forward. Okay, Claire, next then, please. Can, can I just ask one more question, just related to my previous question? Are we required to do an equality impact assessment for this application, or, or is it, would that be a matter for the applicants? Dominic. You're on mute, Dominic. Uh Point. I don't think it's actually required as it's not a major development. Um, it didn't come up as a requirement, but it's something we, we certainly considered as part of the, the proposals because um, obviously the, the, the lift issue was given some consideration by DFT and, and they, they, they'd actually, they, they actually considered the QIA implications. Mm -hmm. um, so we've certainly, although, although one may not have been officially submitted, we've certainly taken on board the requirements of the QIA and, and, and factored all that into the, in, into the proposals. Fair enough, thank you. I just wanted, wanted to check, thanks. I mean, we are, we, there is a pub, uh, legal requirement, a public sector equality duty, so um, outside of the planning process, so we can progress that if we, we need to, I guess. Um, Claire, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think I'm very um, supportive of, of this application. I mean, it's obviously very needed that we have um, additional um, access for the station. What I'm in, interested to find out is how long do we think this kind of temporary situation is um, going on, um, likely to go on? And is this site, you know, um, a site that the council are thinking could help with our kind of housing supply programme at all in, in the future? So Claire, how are we going to make sure this doesn't go on as long as the station around the other side of the uh, railway is is um, carrying on. I think it was 1983 plaque is on there. I think I bet the planning committee then was told it was a temporary um, um, setup. Yeah. So we we did have consideration to whether this should be a temporary permission or not. It was felt that due to the operational nature of the development, that wouldn't be um, appropriate or warranted. Uh, however, it is because it's a council-owned site, there are separate ways outside of the planning process of which the council can ensure that a, a larger scheme is forthcoming and does, um, does come to fruition. So at the moment, the plan is maximum 15 years, you know, but is there any planning, um, planning issue, we can, planning control we can do to make sure it's not there for the next 30 years? No, I don't believe. It, it, I mean, temporary would not be 15 years. That is heading towards more permanent. Um, but what I would like to do is if Robert Offord is here, he would be able to speak on behalf of Regen um, to sort of talk you through the vision of the site. Yeah, okay, Robert, how are you going to ensure this isn't there for 30 years? Thanks, thanks, Chair. 
Um, we're already working in partnership um, with Network Rail and TfL to look at a longer term solution on the northern side. Um, to be able to um, even consider that, we need the second entrance um, because there may be, uh, depending on what form those plans take, disruption on the northern side, which will necess necessitate southern entrance to, to allow that to happen. Um, the form of that partnership is, is um, um, being written up in the form of an, a memorandum of understanding between the three parties. Um, and that will be signed as part of the um, development of the southern entrance. So we can, we're, we're working in partnership already, as I say, on the south side and embedding that relationship to find a, a longer term solution, um, both for the north side uh, and to then step back and take a further look at what can happen on the south side if that entrance is needed or indeed if it's no, no longer needed, uh, find alternative use. Thank you. OK, so you've got an answer, Claire. I think we're hoping that it will be. Um, short-lived. Michael, please. Anything? Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm just disappointed in the um, provision of um, disabled parking. We've got one, I think, one on site. And then um, I'm not convinced about the uh, the Amherst Road car parking um, supposed to be in close proximity. If it's beyond um, the, the the legal requirement that um, the qualification criteria for disability and blue badges, then um, it's irrelevant. Um, it, you know how close it is. If it's beyond 50 meters, then um, we are we are not serving our disabled residents well. And I just wondered whether somebody can supply some clarity on that. Joe, please. Um, thank you very much for the, for the question, Councillor. Um, th this was certainly something that, that we gave considerable thought to, and, it, and it's a very good question. I, I think that the challenge is, is the sort of inherent problem that has, has been highlighted on Graham Road, um, because in terms of providing additional on-street bays in that location just, just wasn't something that was seemingly possible. And so the, the fact that blue badge holders are able to park um, free of charge in Amher Amherst Road and then access the station via that entrance was considered um, an appropriate solution. And I, I absolutely agree that we would rather provide an accessible bay in very close proximity. It was just purely we, we couldn't see that opportunity being in such close proximity to Mayor Street as well. Um, but absolutely, I, I take the point. So how many blue badge bays are there in the Amherst Road uh, entrance car park? So th that's an excellent question. Um, I'm not sure off the top of my head, although I am aware that you, you can park in any of the bays um, free of charge. Obviously, I can certainly double check that in terms of specific dedicated bay provision. How many should there be? Um, in terms of... Well, there's normally a standard for these sort of things, isn't there? 10% of patronage or one per 100,000 users? Um, so in, in terms of, you know, for example, London plan standards, the, the draft London plan standards would dictate that at least one on street or on site disabled bay should be provided for developments. We've obviously looked at that standard and it hasn't been possible to apply it in that locality for the reason, you know, that, that we, um, the councillor was outlining previously. And therefore, we've then looked at the next best alternative with Am Amherst Road. Yeah, uh, I'm not too bad Amherst Road, though. Is there, a plan is there any planning control to insist that there is blue badge parking within the Amherst Road car park? So I, I, I wouldn't know. I would have to ask if someone else was, was aware um, of that. Should there be? Oh, I don't think we'd be able to do that, given that the Amherst Road car park is not within the red line boundary. Okay. So, sorry, uh, Chair, can I interject quickly? My understanding is that it's a council-run car park and therefore, potentially, if you've got a blue badge, you can go in any parking space. The key issue then becomes, 
are all the parking spaces already taken in which case you need to limit the number of car parking spaces at a number to uh, disabled um, uh, access only which then stops them being backed out with other users so that is surely something that we can as part of this decision instruct the relevant officers to go away and check and um, and and then make sure that if it's backed out all the time so disabled uh, users can't get in there then uh, we 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 get, we uh, make sure that there are disabled only spaces there. Can we do that, Joe? Uh, I suspect not, because it, as we've been told, it's not within the red line. Um, but if we can ask uh, Dominic to go away and investigate this, that would be a good thing, I think. And um, talk to Craig, and I mean, it's something that really should be happening. I think um, if it's if it's not. Um, I think it's quite, got two percent. I think from yeah. residents with disabilities in the borough. I think that can be reflected yeah. at least as a minimum. Thank you. And of course, development the plans are proposed for that area, so that needs to be thought about. Stephen, thank you, Chair. Um, to be honest, most of my questions have been answered, and I note that there's a um, there's a national lighting report in the in the report as well. Um, welcome sure to local um, residents I just wondered if I could ask a question of officers around and just um, uh, Councillor Hansen mentioned at the top around um, um, waste from the kiosk particularly around um, disposable cups I just wondered um, to what extent the I think it's LP 57 around waste in the local plan what it does mention was ongoing waste from the operation of um, the development what um, what the thoughts were from officers around the extent of how, whether that could be applied in, um, in the case of, for example, um, disposable cups. Claire, what's the question? Thanks for that question, Councillor. Um, I don't believe that we would have um, the ability to control what sort of cups and waste uh, a kiosk is actually developing. LP58 is more in relation to the removal of waste and reducing waste, um, but not in the sense of sort of no disposable cups. But they have to provide a, they have to provide a euro bin, don't they, of X volume? Do they have to provide recycling facilities as well? That's absolutely correct. So there will be on-site waste and recycling um, facilities, which will then be removed from the site. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Chair. Okay. Well. Thanks, okay. I got a few questions then. Um, my first question, uh, and they're all random really, the trees, the planters, um, why can't we have street trees? Is there not enough space there rather than a tree in a box? There is a big debate going on on this. I understand at a meeting I was at that the Mayor suggested that he wasn't in favor of um, large trees on the basis that they might have to be taken out at some stage um, however that hasn't been resolved uh, I think we, we, we will have an in we have we will have an internal discussion about this probably involving ward councillors as well um, there are a, a number of um, suggestions and they're not resolved yet. Uh, but any suggestions well I know that the um, for instance, the, um, um, the local groups have suggested that there should be fruit trees planted at the front of the station. Um, we've discussed this with our landscaping officers and with our tree officers, and there's a suggestion that we might end up with um, fruit bushes around the pergolas. <laughs> the okay. London Underground want to hear all this, but um, they're all, they're all, all these issues will be considered and they'll, they'll be addressed and, and there'll be the opportunity to, to Comment and approve them as part of the of the outstanding conditions. Just it's a, it's a fair point. Tree trees would be preferable to plant box planters. Um, uh, Peter raised a, a good point about construction and um, the construction management plan. Um, can we have that come back to members to see what's going to happen there, please? Because we don't want um, everybody disrupted for God knows how long. Um, unless there's a good reason to do it. Um, is that okay? We're allowed to do that? Claire, we can do that? 
Uh, you can. Um, however, and we've sort of had this um, through the week um, and thinking about the open nature of the site mm -hmm. in addition to the site site um, as well as the prefabricated nature of the majority of the construction. Um, and we've spoken with the applicant as well and they've assured us that actually the construction disruption would be quite manageable um, and they would be prepared to submit um, discharge to um, officers. Uh, however, due to the scale of it, didn't, we didn't feel it was necessary to come back to committee if at all possible. Uh, but it might be helpful if Dominic West could also speak to that. Yeah, I mean, uh, thanks, Jack. Councillor Snell quite correctly raised the issue of the skip on the bus lane in Graham Road, which I know Councillor Stops and others have also raised. Uh, I was absolutely incensed when that skip went in, and I was absolutely incensed when I found out that it was uh, due to last until next year. Uh, and I did have a discussion with colleagues and. Fortunately, we were uh, with the with the Extinction Rebellion people who are currently occupying. That's the right word. The site uh, that in question, uh, we managed to get them to agree to to help so that the skip could be located, uh, relocated away from the bus lane onto the site where it is now. Um, and it's certainly um, the case that I do not want to see a skip located for a long term as part of this proposal, and we will fully take that on board. Um, it may also be worth mentioning that one of the sites that we're looking at as a, as a potential work site, potential site for storing materials and for having welfare facilities is across the road in Marvin Street. Again, the local community there have been wanting to get that site developed into a, a, a parklet. And it's something that we were looking at with TfL before the funding ran out. And, it, and, it may, and Marvin Street is being considered as an, as an option um, to, to store materials on the park. I, th I think, um, sorry, please, sorry. Just, just make uh, one, uh, a couple of very, very sort of final points because I, I did speak to the, the network managers uh, and also the, the construction logistics uh, monitoring officer um, who has been appointed really as, as part of the contributions that we, we now are um, taking from developments and, and including the Graham Road entrance and I, th I think that the key point to make is is this um, colleagues from TfL have said that the vast majority of construction will be on site and because the construction components are pre-fabricated that makes it a much more seamless installation process um, so you, you simply would not need any uh, disruption or skip on the carriageway. I think one thing, talking to the network managers, we do need to manage is the interaction with that you know, potentially problematic scheme at 221 Graham Road that has been highlighted, but we will absolutely do that through the CLP and CMP manage, uh, management process. And as I say, we've got a dedicated office for that. Okay, we've highlighted well, just, it enough. Just Peter. I mean, there's no particular, you know, we're not blocking up buses and everything else in developments close to where I live, which is just off Graham Road. And yet a lot of people out of choice have a skip that turns up, they've bagged up all their rubbish, they empty the bags into the skip and the skip goes off in about two, three hours. I do not understand why, and this is obviously something we need to raise at corporate committee because it's not a planning issue, we need to find out why we have officers thinking it's acceptable to license skips in major bus routes, particularly at a time when they're under the pressure from the low traffic neighbourhoods. Now, that should also, that should also inform, because if people can do it out of choice who live around me on the streets that don't block up the rest of the traffic, then surely we should be requiring that in new planning developments. I mean, I, don't, I really don't understand why the skips have to be stuck there at all, because they can be brought in, rubbish taken away, and they get taken away within, what, two, three hours. That's surely something we can condition. Anyway, thank you. I have my I've got one more question, and it's the same question every time I see a two-tier cycle stand. Um, if you ask any stuff, and considering TFL are doing this development, and our our um, transport department is supposed to know something about cycling if you ask any of the members of this committee who are cyclists we don't want to see two-tier cycle ranks because you bang your head on them 
You can't lift terrible things. Joe, um, why are we still doing this? So I think that first and foremost, it, it's a really good point. Uh, you, you've made it previously, Endless. and you and I have discussed it. And certainly in, in the comments and, and consultee responses that, that we give to applicants generally, we do not recommend two-tier cycle stands, ab absolutely. But contextually, with Hackney Central, the, the key sort of alarm bell at the moment is the station has been identified as not having enough capacity for cycle parking. That, that's the sort of first point. And so what, what the, the application does first and foremost is propose 14 um, Sheffield, Sheffield stand parking spaces, so seven stands in total. That, that's the key point to provide more accessible parking and to resolve that overcapacity issue. The, the cycle hub um, really expands the, the breadth of provision in Hackney because it's a hub that is more intended for medium term cycle storage. In other words, largely for commuters. And th those cycle hubs have proved particularly successful in, in the mini Holland boroughs, Enfield and, and Waltham Forest. They are more based on, on volume and capacity, and so they do use two-tier cycle stands. I looked at the guidance today specifically, and if you look at the London Cycle design standard, and actually our guidance as well, both do say that we absolutely would permit two-tier stands, but crucially, the design has to be of a very high standard. And I think that's the key point, is that condition that cycle parking the two tier stands must be appropriately spaced to minimize the chance that you would bang your head um, to ensure that people with with a, a range of different issues are able to access and store their cycles effectively um, and i think in doing that the sort of cost benefit dynamic of what that cycle hub would bring to Graham Road as making it more of a destination for cycling and a multimodal destination it is definitely justified. But as I say, come back to the first point, I in absolutely agree with the tenant that we broadly don't support two-tier cycling. Well, I don't care whether it's in the London Cycle Design Standard or what it's in. Two-tier <laughs> cycle stand. You ask Katie, you ask Peter, you ask Stephen, you ask me, I bet. None of us like two tier cycling. And and, and absolutely and absolutely um, she's a cyclist. She can't put the thing anyway. If you're determined to do it, then that's okay. But it'll you know, you want to go and have a look at the Hackney Downs one. The Hackney Downs ones are rubbish, you know? I've I've, I've used um I've used the Hackney Downs cycle racks numerous times. I I, I absolutely understand the point that you're making. Okay. This will be a much higher provision in terms of quality. Okay, any more questions, members? No? Okay. Um, I think that's it. Well, Councillor Stobbs, I, well, I think we've lost Councillor Bell. Um, he's a cyclist. I know, but I don't think he's returning to the meeting. Okay. Right, okay, so thank you very much, everybody. And this is a fabulous development that we're all looking forward to, um, I'm sure, um, if we approve it to this evening. Um, so the recommendation is to grant planning permission, subject conditions, and completion of a legal agreement. All those in favor, um, now put your hand up or not and keep it there, please. All those in favor, please show. Okay, Peter. In favour. Katie. In favour. Michael. Michael, you have to tell us. Apologies, Chair. In favour. Stephen. Uh, in favour, Chair. Claire. In favour. And Councillor okay. is in favour. That's all of us. Thank you very much indeed. We really Thank you, everybody. Seeing it. And um, that's it for this evening. Uh, Chair, not quite uh, not delegated quite. decisions. Um, 
delegated decisions please take note of them thank you very much um just wanted to say thank everybody for joining us this evening also for the year because that is the last planning committee meeting oh, wow. of the year okay and i just wanted to remind ah. staff and committee members the next meeting the first one of 2021 is on the 13th of january thank you thank you chair thank you very much chair and everyone have a merry christmas thank you thank you, you, too. Thank, you. thank you everybody bye bye thank you Craig.